Well, I was going to just tack this on the end of one of the um, episodes of the bikes that I'm doing at the moment, but it turned out to be quite the episode all by itself. <laughs> I love these connectors um, because they are really easy to connect and disconnect once you've installed the wiring. I've never tried to do that before and although they come with operating instructions, it's quite a palaver. Well, I thought I'd start with the seat itself, uh, mainly because we've got plenty of scope and uh, I can get it on a bench and it's a lot easier to see what we're doing. Yeah, loads of wiring. Something's on fire. Oh yeah, okay. For a minute there, I thought I'd bought another TVR. So first up, of course, none of the wiring matches the colors on the bike. So <clears throat> the red actually goes to a blue and um, the white actually goes to a red. Uh, the black goes to a black, yay. Good, so that's that all sorted. Now we're just gonna get rid of these. No going back now. And we have operating instructions. Kill. Cool. And given the size of those, it looks like you don't need much protrusion of wire itself. Um, I've allowed double so that I can double it back on itself like I normally do. That may work. If it doesn't, we'll, um, we'll go back to the shorter version. Alrighty, stage one. Stage two uh, is to literally slip that over that rubber piece there. Uh, I've gone with a male because they're usually more cooperative. And now it's time for our new crimpers. We just got to decide which size it is. But what we've got to do is crimp that rear one without crimping those front wings, apparently. That's what it says. Keep the wings up. Okay. Still don't know what size it is. Thankfully, we've got 134 of them, so we can afford to make a few mistakes. So they seem to have missed out a step, and that is which way up and how does that actually crimp it? It's a tiny little illustration, and you can't really see. So um, when I've worked it out, I'll get back to you. One would imagine it would be like that, right? But that seems to splay them out rather than in. So that's not working. Like I said, good job, we got 134. Well, we got 132 now. Anyway, I was almost right, uh, just completely wrong. What you have to do is make sure that those fit inside there. So you actually have to bend them in a bit to start with. Unless this is just completely the wrong size, because yeah, they don't fit in any of those. And that's the biggest hole. Um, yeah, so you have to bend them in a bit initially to make sure that they engage on the side of that those teeth this boy here um folds them over on top of each other let's give it a go right so i've loosely clamped that um with my fingers to the rubber now we'll try and do that exercise that i just tried to explain something like that i'm going to give it a squeeze well it's definitely clamped it can't pull it out Yes, that's good. Wings are still up. Well, we've got three of these. Uh, one which seems to have a hook on it, so that presumably is for getting it out again. Um, the other two maybe for pushing it down that tube, because it's a bloody long way. I'll go right down there, come out that red bit. Well, I managed to get one through just by the strength of the wire pushing it in. But, it, I mean, you can just pull it straight out again. Like so. So that's not very good. Well, I was wrong. It seems the females are more cooperative. So that is one uh, that I've hooked into this end exactly as per their diagram. As if they've only done one of them. Uh, because on these, you can, you can pull that red bit out push the wire in as far as you need and then push the red bit back on and that 
that seems to hold it in place. So that's a result of some description. I don't fancy trying to do all three at once. Let's try and do another one. Two down, one to go. Uh, this is what I meant. You can pull this red bit up. Um, so yeah, uh, just done, tried to do the white one and totally annihilated the female and everything about it. So we're two females down, two rubbers and three males. Hmm. And I think I destroyed the wings on the second female uh, that's in there. They don't explain what the wings do. I'm assuming they kind of hold them in place once you've got them in their goddamn fitting. I don't know. Three all, it's the score, although the rubber survived. Mm. Yes, it's a close match here at Highbury. Um, that's showing my age. Um, yes, definitely a game of two halves. So the other difficulty I'm experiencing is that these have some kind of ratchet in them at the back there, as you can see. And they won't, they won't release until you get them all the way in. See, that won't pull back until you clamp it completely up. Then it comes free. And that's why we're annihilating so many. I say we because I'm holding you personally responsible, uh, or equally responsible. Anyway, the score is now 4-3, uh, female missing in action, can't find it anywhere, don't know where it went. Right, I've taken that completely off just so we can see what the hell's going on. And two of them are kind of flush, not really. Anyway, um, bearing in mind you need a microscope to do this, we've got this kind of fishhook thing. And then... On the back of these, there's that little slot which it does fit into. So what I'm trying to do is hook it in there and pull them through as far as they'll come. Now I guess we got something similar on the mail. Still don't know what the other two are for. Pushing them out again, probably. Why have we got two? As you can see, we now have three different levels of uh, insertion. And right now, the only thing stopping me from hurling this across the workshop is uh, I'd have to clear it all up. As usual, watched a few uh, helpful videos from other YouTubers on how to uh, fiddle around with these fiddly things. And uh, it turns out they're just pretty fiddly. And if you don't know by now, patience is not my middle name. Anyway, a couple of useful videos. Uh, one guy, um, I want to say from Germany, but I may be wrong. Um, it could be from Austria or Switzerland or anywhere, really. But anyway, that kind of accent, uh, very helpful and, and came across some of the problems I've already come across. Uh, another guy from Cornwall in the UK, equally difficult to understand. Um, and he used, instead of using the crimpers, he used um, long nose pliers, which I might try myself. Yeah, because honestly, I think these are half the problem. They, as you can see, they annihilate. It is, is chopped off half the thing. There's only half of it there, right? So I might try uh, the Cornish method. More casualties. Yeah, that worked a lot better, I have to say. These are a bit all or nothing, but that's a good crimp there, and nice and firm. Maybe don't bother buying the whole kit with the uh, crimpers, because you probably won't need them. They're at the back of the drawer, probably won't use them again. So the other issue I'm having is getting these flush at the end. As you can see, two of them have gone in, but this last one hasn't. They are necessarily tight to push in, and I think what it boils down to, I got lucky with these, the black and the white. The wires themselves are a thin gauge. So the strands are a thin gauge. So they don't have any strength in them whatsoever. So the wire would rather be just buckle up rather than push through. So I've just got to get that last one into place. And then I can use that to lock them all down. 
and these I think they're supposed to help but they really don't. That said I finally got the fish hook in there and um, got them all flush. Thankfully I had them the right way up which is critical because otherwise this won't clip in, the red piece won't clip in, um, but it has and um, you can't pull the wires out the back so that kind of locks everything into place, a little red doofer. Anyway, that's only half the story, now we've got to do the other side. So in my particular kit, these uh, the male end of things, uh, well female in terms of the connectors but the males actually go into those tiny little holes. Yeah, so that's going to be fun, lining them up. Anyway, um, the Germanic sounding person um, was able to remove that red plate and then lock it into place later. Uh, I think our Cornish friend did not do so. Anyway, I'm buggered if I can find out how to get them out. They seem to be locked in place already. So I guess we're going to have to struggle and try and get the male doofers through those holes. These male doofers. To do the other side of the connector is going to be altogether more complicated because I'm having to do it in situ uh, on the bike itself rather than on the bench. So that's going to be fun and games. Good news is that the wires themselves seem to be a little firmer, um, yeah, um, a little bit more rigid than the ones to the light fitting itself. So I'm hoping they'll push through easier. Uh, we're going to start with the blue one because that's uh, nice and big, um, long. So let's give it a go. And I know I said I wasn't going to use these, but I'm going to persevere with them. I think I was just potentially using the wrong size there. I think it's that middle one there that we want to use if we can. So um, we'll give them another go. Otherwise, we'll revert to the Cornish method with uh, long nose pliers because that worked perfectly. So things we have learned from our limited experience thus far it's slightly easier to get the little rubber booties on before you strip the wire secondly you don't need much strippage probably only need about five mil so again we've got those rear wings just gently squeezed in with your fingers honestly you can use your long nose pliers if you want and keeping those forward wings up because they uh, they uh, tie into the locking device. All right, so I'm actually going to use the largest setting on these crimpers to see what happens. Wrong again. Uh, second one down. Uh, my first idea was uh, the right one. I still prefer just doing it with the uh, the long nose pliers, honestly. So um, I shall be putting those crimpers back in the drawer. They're not good for this job in particular. We shall be using these. Alrighty, uh, next up, let's see if we can just feed this into the actual plug unit. I'm not happy with that. Looks a bit of a mess, doesn't it? And of course, we've got to make sure it's in the right hole. Uh, so our blue wire is actually a red wire, as you can see. So with the latch uppermost that fits into that, uh, it needs to go in the left hand one. Right, so that one's now in, hopefully in the right bloody hole. Um, so the side, the top side of the wire with the wings up goes towards the top side of the fitting, i.e. with that latch there. And you should have, let's see if we can get any light on the subject. And you should have that much protrusion. It's quite tricky, it's quite fiddly, sometimes you have to actually bend the, the little piece of metal itself to make sure it's all straight. And honestly I think that's half the trick with these, is uh, not to try and force it because you'll just like mangle it up and whatever. You just have to like tweak it, make sure it's straight, push it in again. Um, and if you get it all lined up, it actually slips in quite easily. So just a lot of fiddle arsing around to be honest. So second time around I used the uh, the long nose pliers and I personally find that a lot easier. It doesn't have to be bustingly tight and it's holding it on 
pretty firmly. So again, with these males, when you're putting them in the tube, upside, i.e. with the wings up, to the upside of the unit, i.e. with the latch there on top. And then they actually push in quite easily and you do hear them click into place. And again, a sturdier wire, i.e. the actual strands themselves, the thicker they are, the better, because they have more rigidity. Yes, indeed, it just helps you get it in there. Um, as we all know, flaccid is never much use for that kind of thing. So, I guess we better plug it together and see if the damn thing works. That'd be a bloody miracle. Alrighty. Fancy speed, eh? Alright, let's see what's going on at the back. Yay! We have a light. Do we have a brake light? Result. Alrighty, one down and um, about 23 to go. Not looking forward to doing these in all kinds of horrible places to reach. So I guess like anything, uh, once you get the hang of it, it's, uh, it's actually okay. And, and trialing different tools to, to get the result is um, how we ended up with the solution of the long nose pliers. And uh, making sure all the pins and things are straight before you try forcing them through the holes because it's all very small. Uh, gaps and tolerances obviously to keep it all waterproof and tight and lined up so if you thought the video was um, uh, any use whatsoever and mildly entertaining along the way give it a thumbs up uh, if you haven't already subscribe down here we'll be doing other stuff like this and of course you can see how I'm putting that into practice on uh, the bike projects I'm doing at the moment and of course encourage others to watch my lunacy